Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, episode number two, with me, your host, Heather Bayer. Well, hello again, and thank you very much for joining me for the second episode of Vacation Rental Success. And for those of you who took the time to feed back to me after the uh, first episode, I'd really like to thank you too, because it was uh, it was really tough putting that first one out and wondering how, how it was going to be received and if, if it had uh, enough information to be of interest. And, and certainly given that... Uh, I've I've just spent four weeks doing a really really intensive uh, podcasting course. I wanted to make sure that the investment in all this uh, in in this equipment and the time spent on getting it right was uh, was going to work. And I'm really excited that uh, that it that it seems to have done so. And there were quite a lot of downloads of that first episode. So I'm hoping that uh, as I mentioned at the the uh, finish of the first episode the only way is up and i do appreciate that i probably did a little bit of over editing on on that one so so this time i have decided that no editing is going to take place at all so you're going to get my ums and ers and occasional pauses while i stop and think about what i'm going to say next but hopefully there's not going to be too many of them so what do we have for you today well, I'm delighted to bring you an interview that uh, that I've pre-recorded with my son Mike Bayer, and we'll be coming to that uh, in a in about ten minutes or so. Um, Mike is he he likes to say that uh, you know the the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, and and he is uh, an owner of a vacation uh, rental uh, and also the owner and CEO of a vacation rental company. And uh, so I'm going to be talking to Mike about all sorts of different aspects of of our business and how it pertains to him and and what he's doing with his property and with his business at the moment. But I wanted to uh, to kick off, and the the only other thing I'm really going to be talking about today, apart from apart from the the interview with Mike, is I wanted to talk a little bit about how the vacation rental industry uh, has changed and what we what we are seeing today in respect of expectations from guests because i've been in this business for 15 years or so and expectations have changed dramatically and i am finding that that i'm coming across some owners who were renting renting out their properties and and have been doing so for a lot of years and are finding it a little bit difficult to adjust to these changing expectations. And it really got me thinking about where these expectations have come from. Because if I go back to my own experiences, and I, I should have a bit of a of a drum roll here as I push the clock back, let's say um, 45 years or so, which is when I was going on vacation with my parents. And we we were campers at that time. And each year we'd pack up the car and head off down to Italy to the tiniest little campsite, a tiniest little basic campsite in northern Italy, about 20 miles or so north of Milan. And we discovered it by accident one year when we were heading down to uh, to Florence and it got late in the evening and we had to stop and it was very dark when we stopped at this place and it was it, it appeared to be very basic um, but that was fine. It was just going to be a one night stop. And when we woke up the following morning and looked out of the tent to this glorious lake in front of us, we realized that we had found paradise. And that was paradise for, for my family, for my parents and uh, and myself for several years of going back. And then when I had my own children in the uh, in the late 70s, early 80s, we started to go back to Lago di Puziano and go um, camping again. And it was about that time, as we're getting into the 80s, um, mid to late 1980s, that the package holiday was becoming 
more prevalent and people were heading off from UK, this is, to Spain and Portugal and uh, the Canary Islands and going on package holidays with the airfare and the hotel and everything thrown in. Um, it's what we know now, of course, as the all-inclusive. Um, we We didn't do that. We preferred the whole feeling of of being able to entertain ourselves feed ourselves whenever we wanted and and create our own uh, activities and my kids just absolutely loved it in the same way as I did when I was a kid and I think we went to Posiano for seven or eight years and uh, Mike my younger son was probably 15 the last year we went and it was it was just the most amazing experience and it's great to hear my kids now talking about uh, you know now i have my first grandchild and mike saying wouldn't it be great one year to take aria back to this same little campsite in uh, in italy uh i think it's probably a bit different now the campsite is still there but i think it's uh, it's grown into something a little bit fancier than uh, than we experienced but what happened when the kids grew up, left home, and and Phil and I decided that perhaps camping on our own was not the uh, was not the thing we really wanted to do anymore. So the next best thing, and and what we found was was a really great thing. We started to rent properties, and we used to go down to Cornwall, in the southwest corner of England. Absolutely fan- fabulous area of the UK if you ever get the opportunity to go there and we'd uh, we'd rent once again fairly basic cottages and we'd go down there with friends and we'd have a just a great weekend or a week and to us it was little more all we needed really was little more than um, a roof over our head it was it was camping with a roof so we had no real expectations because we'd come from this uh this camping environment where anything fancier was was going to be very acceptable and more so we were quite happy to to take our own linens we made our own beds up um if the place wasn't that clean well who really cared um if as as long as there was there was a vacuum and a duster we could we could do that and at the end of the stay, we expected to clean it all up before we left. And we really had no more expectations than that. And to a, to a large degree at that time, and as we went into perhaps the, uh, the 1990s and the earlier part of, uh, of the 20th cent- 21st century, um that's that's was was what people were expecting they didn't care they really didn't it was it was great to have their own private space and to spend time with family and they brought we we used to take our own pots and pans and it was always a huge bonus if we found if if we found a load of casserole dishes or or a potato peeler that actually worked and a knife that was actually sharp but over the past 10 or 15 years, we, can't, we, we are dealing with a totally different demographic. We're dealing, for a start, with the, the people who were children at the time of these package holidays. And they hadn't done the camping bit. They had been going to hotels and having going into clean rooms they never had to to really lift a finger everything was laid on for them so they had a very different experience than than what the other section of the vacation rental population were doing which was which was camping so as these children grew into adults and began going to the all inclusive resorts and then finding the boutique hotels Transitioning for them to vacation rentals was an entirely different thing. So these this this demographic are the ones that 
expect a property, quite rightly so, to be absolutely pristinely clean. They don't want to find cobwebs, spider webs in the corners. They don't want to find dust bunnies under the bed. And believe me, they'll go looking for them. They want all the amenities and the facilities. They want, they want um, nowadays uh, flat screen HD TVs, the best entertainment systems that they can get. They expect to have docking stations for their iPods. They expect internet access so they can stay in touch and, and use all their devices while they're on vacation. They don't expect to have to make up their own beds when they arrive at a property. And they certainly don't expect to have to clean at the end of their stay. So this is, to, to me, and I, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm quite happy to, to hear any feedback from somebody who says, no, 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 that's, that's not what we experience. But this is the way I'm seeing it at the moment. And I know from my experience now, um, I'm heading out to uh, a vacation rental in Eleuthera in the Bahamas um, tomorrow. And this, my expectations have dramatically changed from, from those 19, late 1980 trips to, to Cornwall. I expect the clean property. I don't want to be making beds. I'm not going to clean at the end. I'm quite happy to pay a cleaning fee. But I am expecting everything to be as perfect as it looks on the listing. And and quite honestly, I want it to be a home from home. I expect to have everything there that I would find in my own home. So that is my little offering, my contribution today on the changing nature of the vacation rental business. And I think if we start looking uh, at our guests in that way as to where they've come from, because we've, we've been encouraging them to come to vacation rentals and get rid of the idea that hotels and resorts are the only place to be. So we want them to come to our vacation rental instead, but we've got to make it a really make it really worth their while make it value for them to go away from what they've uh, what they've been expecting in a hotel and find they they need to find something very very similar when they get to their vacation rental so i'm sure i'll get some feedback from that and i'd love to uh, to hear from you if you would um uh, leave me a comment leave some comments and uh, and we should soon be setting up uh, a method by which you can call uh, directly and leave us a message. It's uh, I'm recording this on February the third, so if you're if you're listening to this at a later date, you might already see the call in button on the side of the show notes on the blog at www.cottageblogger.com. Um, but uh, but if not, it's going to be coming soon. So I'd be delighted if you could use that call in. Just offer a um, uh, offer your feedback, ask your questions, um, give us some tips, something that's worked for you. I'm looking forward to sharing those in future episodes. So now I want to move on. Uh, straight away to my interview with uh, with Mike. Uh, as I mentioned, Mike's my son. Uh, he runs a company called Vacation Rental Ready, and he's going to tell you a bit about that uh, a bit later in the interview. And he has a beautiful, beautiful property uh, on Lake Ontario in uh, in Ontario, and uh, it faces south across the lake. So. Um, you can't actually see the U.S. on the other side, but uh, but it uh, Lake Ontario sort of is 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 between uh, Ontario and uh, and New York State uh, and Pennsylvania, I believe. I could have my geography wrong, but uh, I'm sure Mike will probably correct me at some point. So, without further ado, let's move on to my interview with Mike. Hi, I'm here today with Mike Bayer who is the owner of Seabreeze Cottage and the CEO of 
vacation rental ready. Hi, Mike. How are you doing today? I'm doing great today, Heather. Thank you so much for inviting me on to the uh, your your podcasting show. I think this is such a great medium for uh, your uh, your subscribers to be able to hear just you know a different way of getting the information across. Um, I listened to your first uh, episode. I thought that was fantastic. Um, and I think just so it doesn't sound too cheesy, I think probably the s- subscribers should kind of know what our relationship is. Well, it uh, the the accents probably give it away. But yes, Mike, uh, Mike. But for everybody listening, Mike is my youngest son and uh, is, has followed me into the vacation rental business and actually has followed me big time and is catching up. Um, Mike is my business partner in Renting for Profit and um, he's, uh, he's bought his own property, uh, did so 18 months ago, right, Mike? Yeah, th- that's right. It was, you know, it was a big step forward for Andrea, my wife uh, and I. At the time, we definitely realized that buying our first vacation rental property was something that we absolutely had to do. I mean, working with you for the last 10, 15 years um, here in Ontario and Canada, it was very plain for me to see that it is an amazing uh, retirement plan to get into the vacation rental industry by purchasing your own property and renting it out. Um, The whole process of having a property and renting it out and running it as a business so somebody else is paying your bills is is just a no-brainer, really. And especially with today's volatile economy, uh, I think it's a really – it's a fantastic way to have a little bit of financial security for certainly for the next 15 to 20 years when we can then look to uh, either sell the properties off or, or then we have vacation properties around the world that we can go and stay in. Yeah, I've talked to uh, a lot of younger uh, people who are who who've asked me the question about whether investment in uh, a second home is is really worth is really worthwhile. Uh, it's a considerable investment, and of, and of course, it's you, you've got that um, uncertainty, I guess, as to whether uh, it's going to work for you, and it it certainly appears to work for you, for you. Now going you know going back to Seabreeze it was a vacation rental uh, when you bought it and I know that because it had been listed with our uh, rental management company for a couple of years and it had been doing really well and I know that when you did buy it it was it was sold to you almost turnkey um so what else what else did you do to bring it up to um your standards and and to increase its rentability. Well, I, th- I think maybe just going going back a few steps. Um, at the time, it was something that we were only just beginning to save for financially to be able to afford to buy our our, our second property because we already have our own home. Um, and my, my wife and I, as you, as I know, obviously uh, Heather, you know, we're, we're quite young. We're only in our very early thirties. Um, so it was it was a big step and. And it just came up in conversation one evening over dinner that you'd mentioned that uh, this property was coming up for sale. Um, I hadn't, I wasn't aware of the property, um, but I looked at it online uh, through the uh, the listing on 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 the management agency site, and I, it it just looked like the perfect little property. And the thing is, I think quite often, and I know from from my perspective. I had really looked at my first rental as, you know, it's got to be big and we've got to have lots of bedrooms, we've got to sleep lots of people and because that way we can make lots of money. And and I think I've become a lot more aware um, working uh, side by side with you for so long that that's not the case at all. So this was the perfect size property. It was a two bedroom, one bathroom property. And location is just so important. Um, this uh, sea breeze is located on the north shores of Lake Ontario. Uh, Lake Ontario, as, as many of your listeners know, is is, is one of the uh, the largest lake. Oh, sorry, it's one of the lakes in, in the uh, the Great Lakes chain, um, kind of between the border of uh, the U.S. and Canada. Um, and it was, as you said, it, at the, at the time they were not planning on selling it turnkey, um, but through the negotiations uh, in the selling selling agreement, we we spoke to the owner or through the real estate agent, and one of our closing conditions was that we would pay the asking price conditional on, on everything being left. And when I say everything, I mean the crockery, the the linens, the uh, the mattresses, the couches, everything. They left absolutely everything. Uh, they took one or two minor personal items and pictures off the wall and things like that. But it was it was the perfect thing for us to do because there's so much cost involved in terms of that initial setup. So 
there was very little we had to do to really bring it up. I mean, apart from looking at the individual bedrooms and matching sheets and linens to the decor of the room, making sure the linens were up to our standards. I think that was really important was to make sure the quality of the linens was 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 right. Um, and it all comes down to that customer service aspect is the fact that you're selling a product to your guest. And when your guest comes to stay, you want them to experience what they would experience in a hotel. You want them to have the quality and the comforts and the amenities that they would find in a hotel. And, and that's that's how the vacation rental industry is beginning to win over the hotel market. Well, it's, it's interesting because we had rented um, that property. I can't remember what it was what it was called before it was called Seabreeze, which is a beautiful, beautiful name, by the way. Um, but we we did rent it and and it was relatively successful and I think we were renting it at eleven hundred dollars a week uh, which was which I thought was at its money for the uh, the facilities and the amenities it actually had but the the owner at the time she was a she was a very nice lady um, but she really didn't want anything to do with it at all which is why she was going through our agency which is fair enough because uh, we 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 often get owners who who are exactly uh, in that in that state? They don't want to deal with their guests uh, at all. They want the agency to do it. So she didn't really have the buy-in to to the customer service aspect that uh, that you do. Um, go ahead. I, I think what I was going to say is is that I wouldn't. I I honestly believe, and I I always advise anybody who comes to to talk to me about their first property in terms of how they should do it. Um, is that I would always, always recommend that for the first year or two, if it's your very first vacation rental property, is always to go with an agency. Um, the reason I do that, I mean, you, you, you do take quite a big hit on the um, on the the, uh, the cut that the agency is going to take, the percentage they're going to take from the rental. But at the same time, that agency, as long as you pick the right one, is going to have the experience in marketing for that particular area. Um, they're they're going to have the search engine optimization in place for for their listing uh, site, um, and th- th- they're going to drive clients to your property, and that gives you time to worry about the systems that you need to set up in the property. I think that's the most important thing that we found is that we had to make sure that everything in the property was running smoothly for those guests that were arriving, and that becomes almost uh, um, certainly in the first year almost a full time job where you have to. You look at every aspect. So from the moment they walk in the door to make sure that the furnace is reliable, it's it, it's topped up. Where you're getting the the, the furnace oil to, to to heat the house, um, the the maintenance in the property to make sure that the groundskeeping's done to make sure the property's clean. Uh, for us, we're quite fortunate. I mean, we only live about an, an hour away from our rental property, but for people who live a little further away you're going to need to be looking for those local services and those local providers who can do the turnarounds and, and mow the lawns and, and things like that to make sure the property is always in pristine condition for the next renter. And that takes time to set those systems up. And the thing is, if you're trying to manage that while at the same time trying to do all the marketing and all the customer service to bring people to the cottage in the first place, um, it, it can almost be too much, I think, for somebody in, the, in their first first few years. But certainly once you have those property, those um, systems in place for your vacation rental and, and you're comfortable and they're almost self-sufficient, that's when I would really recommend that an owner dives out on their own to start doing their own marketing and save that commission that they're losing to the uh, management agency. Yeah, it's, it's interesting you, you'd you'd say that, and I'll go along with it to a, to a certain degree. I know when we bought our first place in Ontario when we were still living in, in England, and we, we didn't go through an agency, we just did it all by ourselves. And and that was that was pretty tough. And it was fairly tough trying to find the uh, well, get the marketing right, and and find the people that were going to to rent it. And we didn't do too well in the first in the first year. So so certainly, I I do suggest um, going with an agency to somebody who's perhaps bought and wants to get immediate return, because as you say, it does take some time. To, uh, to to get the marketing going and get the interest, particularly in if you're going to do a uh, your own website. But of course, 
I, I guess with the popularity of some of the listing sites, I know that I've I've listed a few properties recently on some of the larger listing sites, and and I've had inquiries within hours of of listing. So it it is possible. It definitely is possible to go out and do it yourself. But I yeah, I understand where you were coming from uh, on that on that point. Yeah, I know. You know what? It's it's a matter of personal preference in terms of what you're comfortable with doing. Um, and through um, through your blog posts on Cottage Blogger, um, some of the blog posts that I'm writing through Vacation Rental Ready, um, and there's several other gurus out there who are providing lots of information about um, uh, basically how to market your property effectively. I think we, I, I hope that we, we all recognize that putting your property on a listing site alone is is not enough. Um, there are so many. There's so much competition out there with vacation rental properties right the way across North America and the rest of the world that you're trying to grab a market that is um, – they have a lot to, to choose from. Uh, and there's reviews and things like that that, that you're, you're competing against. Um, so you have to do everything to the highest possible degree of quality and professionalism right from the get-go. And I think – I just think when you're starting out, it's, it's good to take that helping hand, even though it's going to cost you. Uh, for the first year or so, I think definitely um, you become more experienced at, at how to do it. And as I said, I, I, this is something that I recommend for, for first-time buyers. Um, but again, you're, you're absolutely correct that if you're looking for that immediate return on investment, which I think most people are if they're investing in it specifically for vacation rental, I think that's something that will really help them out in the first uh, first kind of 12 to 18 months. Yeah, and we're over the next uh, over the next couple of weeks and months. We're going to be covering just just a ton of uh, of tips and advice on on really how to get going with a first rental. And you were you were saying that a listing is not enough, and you're absolutely right. Uh, the competition is is growing, and uh, we'll be talking about things like uh, setting up a blog and and having uh, people owners having their own websites which i think is really really important and of course using um using social media to to get the message out uh, as well so you're back to seabreeze tell us about uh, any um surprises that you had in the first few months of rental and how you dealt with them and i know you did have one major incident Yes, I mean it, it. It was something that we were aware of when we purchased the property. Um, was that um, it being a rural property, uh, as many properties across North America, if you're not close to your local urban centres, um, you're going to be on um, a septic system, and you're also going to be pulling your water from a well um, or some other form of. Um, well, mostly from a well. Um, and for us, um, where Seabreeze is located, it's, it's very, very sandy soil. Um, and the the drainage rate for the water, or sorry, the, the refill rate for the well was very, very low. Uh, we were aware of this when we bought the property. Uh, we had a report and from um, a, a well tester, and they, they were quite confident that the well would be enough to support fairly frequent uh, use of the property, like full-time use of the property. What we fail to realize, though, and and this is something that we should know firsthand from from renting properties, is that vacationers or, or guests when they're staying in a property will are a lot harder on the property than you would be if you were staying there. And what I mean by that is that they vacation people on holidays or vacation they have a slightly different routine than you would do if you are living in your own property. And what I mean by that is is that they they'll shower maybe twice a day. Uh, they may get up in the morning. They got the time to do it. They got the time to to groom. They got the time. They're using uh, the they go in the lake. They're using the hot tubs. They'll come out and shower again. So we found very very quickly that we were going through water like crazy. And within our first six months, we had four or five renters run out of water during their stay. And as you can imagine, uh, having problems with the utilities in your vacation rental is an absolute disaster. Um, and it was it was something we had to work quite hard to maintain our professionalism and maintain our quality of our product to the guests we had staying um, by you know providing discounts on return stays and things like that and, and trying to fix the problem as quick as we could and it became more and more difficult um, to to do that so we realized that we had to invest and we had to if there's anything any of you can do who are listening to this 
make sure you, your utilities to your your vacation property are absolutely top notch. Um, and so what we had to do is we, we actually ended up spending twenty thousand dollars drilling a new well. And unfortunately, it was it was going to be ten thousand um, dollars. But when the uh, when the guy was drilling down, um, he came across um, some problems and some issues. And realized that the well on its own wasn't going to cut it, so we had to spend another ten thousand dollars to put in a holding tank. So we ended up with a well and a holding tank and 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 a thousand gallons worth of water underground. Uh, so it's so just a big cistern. So that way that you know we always have a thousand gallons on on hand for the guests staying in the property. So anyway, so that resolved the problem, um, but at great cost. Yeah, I know that was that that was quite a blow to you, but uh, you were rented really, really well over the first year. So, did you get uh, did you get the return? Uh, yes. Well, obviously, in spending that money on the utilities, we had it was something we had to do. Um, and I, if there's anything I can recommend to your listeners, is, is not to scrimp and save on the utilities. Get everything top of the line, um, reliable, warranted, uh, and easily serviceable. Um, the, that really, are, sorry, those really are issues with a vacation rental you can't afford to have. Um, what we also did, and we, we realized that we were going to need to make sure that we had year-round marketability. So we added some additional amenities to the property too. Uh, again, it wasn't things we budgeted for, but we really had to make sure we were going to be able to pay off this, uh, this well. So we actually purchased a hot tub um, which was uh, certainly here in Ontario um, during the winter months is a huge draw because it gets so cold. Many people just don't want to leave uh, a vacation rental property. So if we provide a hot tub, they can, you know, it's a little bit unique. It's it's uh, a good amenity to have to keep competitive with other vacation rentals on the market. Uh, we also provided uh, high-speed internet. At the time when we first bought the property, it wasn't available. But through some... Um, uh, through improvements to the services in the area, we got high-speed internet, and we also added a, a, another few. Th- um, so it was, we had to we had to spend some money to make some money. Um, but yes, in, in that first year, um, uh, it, it 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 didn't pay off the well, but it certainly um, was well on the way. I mean, it, that first year just rented like gangbusters. It was it was fantastic. Yeah, and I've noticed that uh, that this summer you're. I mean, here we here we are in the first week of February. Um, and, uh, and we've just taken, and we've just filled the last week for your summer. So you're all booked up now. I think, except I, I think you might have a, a week at the very beginning and the very end of high season, but those will go too. So, uh, we're, we're just working on your low season now. I think what we've really found though, is that, and I, and anybody else who, again, who has a vacation rental property, who's listening to this realizes uh, that it's the repeat renters who pay the bills. Uh, we had last year, we had uh, two or three groups who came back three or four times through the year uh, just for weekend rentals and even a full week in the summer. And in fact, I've got, uh, there's, a, there's a week renter this year when we have, I think it's a fourth or even a fifth time re- return renter in only uh, 36 months. So I think it all comes down to it's the whole package. Um, you can't just say that you have an amazing property because it has a hot tub. You can't just say you have an amazing property because you've got really nice linens. You have to pay attention to everything. And it, it might sound like a, a big task, but I think if you if you read your blogs, your blog posts, and just pay attention to what a lot of uh, – there's so much useful advice um, out, out there on the internet about how to prepare your property – how to provide those services to your guests. I mean, even simple things like I always make sure that I give my guests a call on the night that they arrive. And it's not because I'm being nosy or I'm uh, or anything like that, but I just want to reassure them that you know I'm their host, even though I'm not there. I'm their host, and, and I want to make sure that they're having a great stay, and if they've got any problems, they know who to call, and they've already spoken to me, so they've already, they've already had that line of communication opened. Um, I'll leave them a welcome package uh, with some sparkling wine and... Uh, uh, depending on the group, if they have small children, we'll leave out some coloring books and things like that. It all comes down to the full package and, and how good you can be as a host. And being an absentee host can be very difficult. But once you get into the swing of it, it's it's so important, so valuable, and you you really will get see the return uh, of guests time after time. 
Yeah, I think uh, what you've pinpointed there really is that uh, that attention to detail and making people feel that they are really, really welcome. I've I've been to vacation rentals before, and and you've probably been with us when you walk in the door, and it's just as though it, it's almost like it is a sterile hotel room. Whereas with a well-run vacation rental, just as you do, uh, you'll find perhaps a, a welcome letter from the owners, which is personalised. Now, I particularly love what you have at Seabreeze, which is the chalkboard on the wall that um, that that you just write in welcome to and then write in the names of your guests. Now, even if you're an absentee owner, you don't it, you, you can do that because you're going to have somebody who changes over, does the change over for you. And that could be just another. Uh, and, and does that happen if you're away and uh, and Judy goes in and does the changeover? Do they write the names of the incoming guests on the board? Yes. So we always provide our our cleaning agency with uh, with the names of the people coming in and the ages as well. So they know we have a, a certain uh, a set set packages that we would like to have laid out for different groups. So, for example, we welcome pets as well um, at our property. And I, th- I think um, I'm sure this is something for another blog, uh, another uh, podcast, but welcoming pets is just so important. Uh, there are so many people going on vacation who, who want to bring their pets with them. So as, as a welcome, we, we put out um, a, a welcome letter for the pet. And really, like it, it's you know it, the letter's addressed to it's addressed to the pet, and it's written as if I'm talking to the pet, but obviously the owner is reading it. Uh, we also leave out a selection of um, you know dog treats, um, some bowls, uh, some poop scoop bags, um, and then there's a, there's a whole box of dog toys um, in a in an outside activities box. So it's it really is a matter of welcoming everybody that from from the pet to the kids to the adults to the grandparents. Uh, you you really have to pay attention to your guests, and, and you're almost like um, you see in the movies the the perfect concierge at a hotel knows your name when you walk in the door, and every time you you leave, they they greet you and ask if there's anything they can provide, and and they begin to know your routine. As as a host, especially if you have returning renters, it's so important to to recognize the fact that you recognize that they're returning renters, um, because opening that uh, or developing that relationship with them will help secure multiple return visits. Well, everybody loves to feel special. And I think, and it doesn't take much. It only takes remembering somebody's name and just saying welcome back that makes them feel even more special. Now on the topic of, of, of dogs, I am, we, we will come to another podcast about welcoming pets but it was interesting that the American Veterinary Medical Association published a report in uh, 2012 that uh, that said there are 70 million dogs in the U.S. and six, over 63% of dog owners feel that their pets are part of their family. So that's a lot of people who may be going on vacation and would not ever consider leaving their dogs at home. So, as I say, that's something we'll come back to. We're we're moving on from uh, checking out on time here a bit, Mike. So um, I just wanted to move on to the video that you've got on the listing, and I I will put a link on the in the show notes to your listing so people can go on and have a look at your video. Uh, I just th- I've I've watched it half a dozen times in the past couple of days because it is so compelling, and and I already talked to somebody a couple of days ago who'd seen it and he, and they said that that sold it to them. I just uh, do you have a couple of tips for owners who are considering creating a video of uh, of their own property? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the services that I provide uh, for my company, Vacation Rental Ready, is photography and videography for vacation rental owners here in Ontario. And and I think I just have to put a little bit of a disclaimer on, on the video that you're linking to is is that I took the footage, I think, two years ago. Um, and it's terrible. It's it's like if you go to a plumber's house, they have the worst plumbing. If you go to an electrician's house, they have the worst ele- uh, electrics. And it's purely because you spend so much time working for other people that you don't necessarily put in the effort on your own. So, it, it, you know, what? I, I think the, the biggest thing about that video, it, it was shot and edited together quite quickly. But really, sometimes that's all it, it, it really needs. Um, so I think the most important thing I can give certainly when shooting video is that you don't need the most expensive camera. You don't need um, 
a, a, a really expensive tripod. Um, it, with any computer system you buy nowadays, it comes with some kind of free software. On, on, a, on a PC, you've got uh, uh, Windows Movie Maker, and on, on the Mac, you've got iMovie. It's very easy. Every device we have now has some kind of video camera on it, whether it be your cell phone. Uh, now digital SLR cameras um, have full 1080p HD footage that you can shoot. So just taking the time to stage the property um, well, so it, it, it looks exactly as it would look when your guests are going to arrive, I think is the first thing. Um, the second thing is picking a really beautiful day to shoot your video. Um, nothing looks better than uh, really bright blue skies and really bright green grass. Uh, I think those are two very important things to that bring out the, the qualities of a property. And if you're shooting a ski property, um, something in the mountains, then obviously, again, a beautiful blue sky and lots of snow on the ground. Um, I have a property I've been trying to go and see for the last few weeks here in Ontario, but the, uh, we've had some uh, some very poor snow conditions and it keeps having green grass, which doesn't really work for a winter property. Um, the third point I would, I would say is always use a tripod. Um, using a tripod is incredibly important to have nice, stable footage. Um, and if you don't have a very good head on the tripod, if it, if it doesn't have um, uh, a, a, liquid, um, uh, a liquid panning uh, head on it, then what I would recommend is that you just try to avoid doing using the panning shots and just use zoom in and zoom out. Again, there are so many videos online to, on, on, on how to uh, produce your own video. Uh, and if you're not sure, um, again, there's tutorials, there's YouTube videos. Um, or if you just don't have the time to do it, then pay the money. Paying, uh, I, I think I charge around about seven or $800 for, a, for a, a, a good shoot. And, and what I mean by good shoot is over um, at least two or three days um, spread out through the year. Um, or if you want a single video shoot, it's about $500. If you think that that $500 for most people is one weekend's rental, that could bring you in close to 200% more bookings than, than if you had it, if you didn't have a video at all. That, it, um, and that, that's, that's a great po um, point you make about uh, the return. Um, I'm just about to post a, a blog post to Cottage Blogger about uh, adding amenities and facilities and being aware that something might cost a fair amount of money, but if you if you look at it in terms of what you're going to get back, uh, we were we were looking at in fact um, getting internet access, and somebody said to me recently, um, "Well, it's going to cost me six hundred dollars for the year for internet access. That's too much." And we said, "But if it brings you one additional weekend, then you've been paid back, and then any more that you get is bonus." And exactly the same with a video. Just consider that whatever you you purchase, or if you if you buy a video, a, a professional uh, a video shoot, then it's an investment in the future. And and once you've got your money back, that video will continue to work for you and bring in more more revenue. Yeah, absolutely. And I think just I just have my one very last point to add to the to the uh, the video is always I would always recommend you purchase music. What I mean by that is that uh, if you're using, uh, you know, anything like uh, some kind of piece of classical music, anything that's been commercially produced, you're going to run into copyright production issues. Um, so the best thing to do is go to um, any royalty-free music website, uh, and there's quite a few out there. I mean, the ones that I personally use, um, I use uh, premiumbeat.com as well as uh, music loops, musicloops.com. Uh, those are two great websites uh, where you can pick up um, a piece of music, and it's you know it's kind of expensive. I mean, it's fifty dollars, anywhere between uh, thirty and fifty dollars for one piece of music. But having the right piece of music for that video really um, pro gives the viewer a more of an emotional response to the video. Um, and you'll see, and the, the, mu the music I used in the uh, in the video for Seabreeze, which uh, is is linked to on the um, um, in in the show notes, you you'll see it's just it's very relaxed and 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 very soft. I thought that music sounded absolute great, uh, absolutely great. It's really evocative. It just it just has a lovely feel to it. And I think and and the thing is that once you've bought that piece of music, it's yours forever, isn't it? You can use it on uh, on anything and perhaps make it your your theme tune. Uh, you know, if if you do a podcast yourself, which anybody else can do, you could use that same music to to 
start and end your podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Right, Mike, it's uh we're about at um at 30 minutes now and uh I think perhaps that's that's all our audience wants to hear of you and I today. So uh, I just want to thank you so much. And before we finish, I'd uh, like to offer you the chance to give a bit of a plug for Vacation Rental Ready. I know you've been working really hard at setting up the company. And uh, and we, as, as uh, our, our agency, is already using your services and plans to use a lot more of your services in the future. So do you want to just tell them to just talk a little bit about uh, VRR, what you do and uh, and how you're going to benefit the uh, the vacation rental owner audience? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the reason I set up uh, Vacation Rental Ready, uh, which you can find at cottagerentalservices.com, uh, the reason I set this up was I really found there is a lack of services out there for owners um, kind of at the point of sale. There, there's a lot of information resources out there that you can buy, like ebooks and, and things like that. But in terms of having people who can physically do um, some of the tasks that um, most vacation rental owners just don't have the skill set to do, uh, I think was really lacking. So I'm primarily, we provide a lot of services to rental owners here in Ontario, but we also have some services we can offer to the, the international market as well. Uh, one of the first things we, we, we provide is basically online consultation. So if you wanted to contact us uh, and send us basically your portfolio of your property, uh, including your listing, um, things like the copy of your cottage guide or sorry, your, your vacation uh, or your property guide, uh, we can basically analyze all these things. We can give you some really good advice and some tips on how to improve your portfolio and bring in more uh, renters to your property. Uh, as well as that, we also provide uh, website design. Um, there's several companies out there now offering uh, different website packages. Uh, we really believe in the, uh, the WordPress theme or the WordPress designs uh, because they really can be search engine optimized to to your location, your area, and any kind of niche marketing that, that you're providing with your property, whether it be a ski chalet, um, whether you're out um, kind of in, in the Montanas and you've got ranching or things like that. We can really focus the website on on something specific rather than, uh, than, than a template that's very generic. Uh, we provide uh, services to improve your um, your property guide. Um, many people will just provide a simple Word document, which can be very difficult to read um, and really not presented very well. Um, so again, if you go on to cottagerentalservices.com and, and look under marketing, under our cottage rental guides, you can take a look at some of the samples we have there and, and how the, those will benefit you. That's... And lastly, I think for our international audiences, we're also providing, uh, we're building the what I believe to be the first rental supply store. There's many um, hospitality agencies out there supplying towels and linens and soaps and all that kind of thing, but we're specifically focusing on the, the rental, uh, vacation rental property uh, market. Um, so check back often and uh, the store will begin to populate. That's great. I'm uh, going to be uh, including a link to Mike's uh, Mike's site and and also the uh, uh, the music that he mentioned. I'll provide links to those websites as well. So so in fact, anything that you hear on any of the on this interview and any any other interviews, you're going to find the links on the show notes on the blog at cottageblogger.com. Mike, it's been truly great. And, uh, of course, you and I are off to um, Eleuthera in the uh, Bahamas to, uh, on Tuesday uh, on vacation. And we'll, we'll be doing a, another short interview while we're there. Um, I particularly want to talk to, uh, to Andrea about what it's like as a mom with a baby in a, in a vacation rental. Um, because it's the first time you've headed out with, uh, with Aria, who's uh, just coming up on six months old. And uh, it's going to be quite interesting to see um, from Andrea's perspective what uh, what family friendly actually really means. So we will be recording a little bit from Eleuthera. And as I say, we, we are in a villa and we have rented that for 10 days. So we'll be doing a lot of learning about um, uh, about being guests as well. OK, so. Thanks once again. Thanks to Mike. And uh, and we shall be back again uh, next week with another interview. Thanks, Heather. Thank you so much for having me. This has been fantastic. 
Well, that was great. That was a great interview with Mike. And uh, uh, I think we're going to be hearing a, a lot more from him. We've actually had a chat today about uh, about doing some co-presenting. But we will have Mike back on uh, on several occasions, I know, just to talk about um, his experiences, um, both in uh, renting out his own property and in uh, and with Vacation Rental Ready. I should also um, mention Mike's uh, Mike's day job. Uh, he's a full time firefighter, and I'm going to probably interview him again in a little while about uh, safety, because he has some very strong views, quite naturally, on how to make our vacation rentals uh, more safe, not only for our uh, our guests, but uh, but also for ourselves. And uh, he sees a lot of vacation rentals in his uh, in his role as account manager for Cottage Link Rental Management, um, and and brings his sort of firefighter perspective to it. So it will be quite interesting to talk to him about uh, about that aspect. Ask him to put his uh, a different hat on and and come in as uh, in, in in his firefighter role and give us his insights on how to create a more safe environment for our guests. Okay, that's about it for today. Uh, that's It's been a blast, uh, as it was the first time, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to episode number three, which is upcoming. Now, I'm not sure if we're going to get this out next week. Uh, as mentioned, we'll be in uh, Eleuthera in the Bahamas. Now, if we can record it uh, while we're away, I have a small recorder with me. It's not going to be the same quality, uh, audio quality, that, that this is. But it, it would be really neat to talk to, um, to Mike and Andrea as parents uh, on vacation. Uh, this is the first time that they've taken uh, Aria, who will be six months old next week, uh, away with them, away from their home environment where they have you know, all their kit and I can't believe how much stuff that uh, that parents these days have for their, for their babies. I'm sure we had nothing like the amount of accoutrements and and things for for babies that uh, that they have nowadays. But anyway, I think I'm probably showing my uh, my advancing age there. Um, but uh, as I say, hopefully while, while we're away, I'll be talking to them about what it's like to be uh, away from home um, with, without all the things that, that make life easy for them um, with a small baby. So once again, thank you so much for listening. It's been a great time today and I'll look forward to, uh, to talking with you next time. Mm-hmm.